Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is the first in my series of practice sessions for the EX374 Red Hat Certified Specialist in Developing Automation with Ansible Automation Platform exam. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite you, if you are watching and have not subscribed, to click the subscribe button and ring the bell. Also, if you enjoy the video or find the content useful, make sure you click like. So as with my other uh, practice session series for various certification exams, this is my opportunity to go through the objectives and do a self-assessment to see if I feel really confident in whatever the objective is asking me or if I have found some gaps in my knowledge for that. My exam is just under three weeks away, so that gives me enough time to brush up on some stuff if I need to. But of course, by this point, I, I should pretty much know uh, what I need to know for the exam. I shouldn't be, you know, learning new stuff during these last few weeks of preparation. That being said, I do try to have the information as accurate as possible with these because hopefully I am prepared for my exam, but these are not to be considered training materials, nor are they considered to be tutorials. I'm putting them out on the internet just because perhaps someone out there that's also preparing for this exam might find some of the things that I do useful with their own uh, preparation. But again, these are my practice sessions. I'm, I'm learning uh, right along with everyone else. Also take note that um, these videos are being made in 2024, uh, end of April, uh, beginning of May. If you happen to find these far in the future, um, just keep that in mind if you're looking for ideas of how to practice for some things, you know, exams have probably changed over time. So we're starting with the understand and use Git section of the objectives, and we're going to be looking at cloning a Git repository and create, modify, and push files into a Git repository. I don't think uh, Red Hat's necessarily looking for, you know, total mastery over how over using Git. I obviously am not a master of it, but the things I do uh, pretty commonly, I'm, I'm quite confident with. So what I've done for my lab environment is I've actually deployed a um, GitLab server. You can do uh, the community edition for free. I think you can do the inter enterprise edition for some amount of time. I decided just to do the uh, community edition. This is not public facing to the internet. It's just in my uh, home lab. Also, I'm working with um, self-signed certs for everything. I didn't take the time to like make my own CA and uh, trust the certs and all that kind of stuff. So we'll need to do a couple of uh, configurations before we actually get started. So let me go to my terminal. Let me start a new terminal window. Prior to starting the video, I was trying to test a couple of things. I've already installed Git. And I've also made me a directory called dev. You don't have to do all of your Git stuff in the dev directory. You can do it in whatever directory you like. However, on my you know work machine and for my own um, personal dev stuff, I will always do stuff just working out of a directory called dev. So what I'm going to start with is uh, git config. And I'm going to set a setting that should tell... Um, tell Git to ignore the fact that I'm using self-signed certs. Normally I would not suggest doing this, especially if you're, you know, working on like production stuff because you want to have SSL in place. But for my, um, for my little lab, I'm not bothering with that. And I think it's, maybe I can get some tab completion here. I'm going to do this as a global config. Maybe, yes, tab completion, yay. All right, there should be something SSL verify, that's it. I guess I need to set that to false, not flask, but false. All right, didn't see an issue there, so get config list. Maybe if I spell config, right? Okay, so we have our, our verifier faults, and that should be stored. I think it's stored in your home directory. So let's go up a level. I think it's a hidden file. Yep, git config. And there is our uh, setting. So I should be able to, to do a, a clone of my repo without getting uh, errors. So what I've done in my GitLab I have created a project called Git Basics. I've actually set it to public, so I don't have to worry about necessarily authenticating to um, to pull down things. And this, these steps I'm going to um, practice here are about the same for using GitHub and other um, other Git based um, 
repo services, the individual buttons might be a little bit different, but the concepts are the same. In GitLab, you would go to code, and we're going to clone with HTTPS for now. And I'll show about cloning with SSH as well. But we'll start with HTTPS. So I'll have git clone and the URL. Now what this is going to do is clone into a directory called git basics. If I want to clone into the actual like current directory, I can use um, dot, you know, space dot to say use this directory. But we clone into git basics. It makes a directory. I can cd into git basics and you will see the readme file that is the same as on the site. I'm going to get rid of this directory and we are going to um, do this with SSH just to show you what that would look like. So RM, I don't have to get rid of this directory, but we are for this. Do I already have an SSH key configured? No, I don't. So let me make an SSH key. So SSH key gen. We're just going to keep all the defaults, not give it a passphrase. In production stuff, I usually will give my SSH private keys a passphrase, but again, this is just for a little demonstration with lab things. You hear my watch go off. My Project 99 EverQuest Guild is having fun on a quake, taking care of mobs. I am preparing for my Red Hat exams, but I'll be able to join them eventually. So let me copy the public key. We'll configure this into GitLab because you cannot... Um, you have, when you're doing SSH for the cloning of a repo, you always are using SSH keys. You do not use username and password for that. And it's actually giving me a little warning there. I'm going to show you the click path as to how to get to that first. So I'll go to my is it profile, or I think it's preferences. It's been a while since I've done this. Yep, SSH keys. I'll add a new key. Give it a, well, it just took the title from the comment of the key. That's fine. And we'll let it expire in a year. All right, so we have an SSH key in here now. Let me go back to my, uh, my projects. And this time I'm going to use the clone with SSH URL. Let's clear our screen. And we'll do git clone, and there it is, git clone git basics, and we are good to go. So cloning a repository, not much to it. Now we need to create, modify, and push files in, into a uh, git repository. Right now, we are on, if I were to do git status, we are on the main branch of the git uh, repository. Typically, you're not going to be working with the main branch. You're going to be working on a different branch and then merge those changes back into main. So we could do git branch, make a branch, then git checkout to get to that. But I'm just going to do what I often do, which is combine git checkout B, and B is going to be the name of the branch. I'm not going to go into details about what branching is and all that kind of stuff. That would make this practice session take forever. And... I have to keep in mind, I'm not necessarily doing a tutorial, but I'm just trying to practice the, uh, the objective stuff. So we'll just call it test branch. So I'm on the test branch. There's nothing to commit. And let's take a look at this readme.markdown. Get, get rid of all this stuff. And I'm just going to say this is a repo for practicing EX374. I think that's the exam number. Yep, 374. Enjoy. All right, so I have modified a file. Let us make a file foo.txt. Here is making a file. Let's see what else it wanted us to do. So create, modify, and push. All right, so there are a couple of things that if you're working with, you know, fresh Git installation, which I am, we need to configure a few things. First of all, I could do Git status. We see there's a file that's been modified, a file that needs to be added. 
I'll use get add dot to add everything. Now stuff's ready to commit. And then if I try to do git commit, usually I do um, dash M and just give it a, a commit message rather than it opening the text editor. My first real commit. Well, that's a bad commit message. Um, add files. Usually you try to make those be declarative. It's going to complain because it doesn't know who I am. So um, all, all commits will have an email address and such attached to it. So I'm just going to make one up for, um, for this case. And so we'll do get config and you can do these configs per, um, per repo as well as global. And then you could also do system, which would apply to every user that's on your system that's using Git. I think the system one, um, is written to Etsy Git config. And um, if you do local, it will be within your repositories directory here with a file called um, get dot get config, if I recall correctly. But we'll do global as it's suggesting. User dot email. I'll just use my little lab domain that I'm doing right now. EJSLab.com. Do not email that. You will probably get bounces because I'm fairly certain I'm not running email services with my lab domain. Gloat. Let's try this again. There we go. And I think I can do, well, no, I won't do two at once. I thought I could possibly do more than one of these at a time. Name. Do Eddie Jennings. All right. So let's try to commit again. All right. We see files have been committed. If I go back to get status, we see there is nothing to commit. If I were to do get log, we see the very first commit, which happened when I um, made the, the repo and we see our commit where we have added files. So the next thing it wants us to do is to be able to push back to a uh, Git repository. Now, if you're working on the main branch, um, you in theory should be able to already push back to that. A lot of repositories are going to be configured to where you have to do a merge request or if you come from the GitHub world, a, a pull request before you can merge into main. So the problem here is my remote in GitLab does not know that this test branch exists. So when I do this initial push, I need to do git push. And I think the actual syntax I want you to do is do set up stream first. I've always done git push origin dash dash, or actually let me try to do git push origin. It's going to complain because the origin, the upstream does not know about this branch yet. So I guess I'll do the syntax as it's telling me to. Usually I do git push origin set up stream and then the um, branch name. All right, and it tells me that this branch is up, up there and we can make a merge request. So if I were to go back to git basics lab, let me refresh the browser here. We see there's two branches and it's telling me, hey, you just pushed to here. Do you want to make a merge request? I am going to do a merge request. I want to merge into main. Go ahead and delete the source branch. Make my merge request. And then I will merge my own merge request. It's there. If I were to go back to my repo, we'll see that readme.md is changed and foo.txt is there on the main branch because I merged that um, test branch in. And then back on the command line, what we're going to do is go ahead and check out the main branch. I'm going, you can do git pull for this instead of git fetch, but I tend to like to do git fetch, git merge. So we'll do git fetch dash P because I want to clean up any um, branches that have been deleted on the remote. I'm not prompted for credentials because this is using SSH for the, um, for the authentication. It got rid of the, remote test branch, or at least my local reference to the remote test branch. And there are changes here. I'm going to merge my local main with origin main. So it has the changes and then I can get rid of my local test branch. And we see now that foo.txt and readme.md exists. We're on the main branch. I cat the readme and it's only going to have the um, first couple of things there. So I believe for this objective, clone a repo, 
create modify push files to a Git repository. I'm, I'm pretty confident with that as that's kind of some um, basic stuff that uh, I will say if you are a system administrator and you're, um, and you're, you're not familiar with Git, I suggest that you become familiar with it. You don't have to be a master of it, but understanding branches and being able to, um, clone and push stuff and, and, and make modifications. It's, it's, it's a, it's a good skill to have. So thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you found my practice session useful. If you did, make sure you do click like on the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you also click the subscribe button and thank you again to returning subscribers and I will see you the next time.